I'm absolutely certain that if you've played Elden Ring, you've heard this phrase at least once. Words that will trigger Vietnam flashbacks in many little poggies. Now, for those of you still puzzling it out, let me introduce you to the one and only Millennia, the top-tier superboss in Elden Ring, hailed as one of FromSoft's most diabolical masterpieces. Wow! And as she proudly claims, And I have never known defeat. Millennia has broken more controllers, created more Reddit threads, and destroyed more vocal cords than any other boss in the Soulsborne Sekiro franchise. A casual gamer shredder who could not be stopped by any type of cheesing tactics or OP builds. You needed to get good at beating her. Millennia has two phases to defeat, which combined have a whopping 33,251 HP, can dodge magic very easily, can scarlet rot you with ease in second phase, deals massive damage per hit, can one-shot you if you don't learn to dodge her waterfowl dance, and she can heal herself with every hit she lands on you. For many newcomers to the franchise, this boss was a nightmare. That is, until a peculiar character with a massive pot on their noggin strutted into the lands between, ready to rescue the poor souls relentlessly crushed by the rot mommy. And their name is Let Me Solo Her. A tarnished brandishing rivers of blood in one hand, a cold Uchigatana in the other, and sporting only a jar as a piece of armour. Let Me Solo Her extended his helping hand to countless individuals looking to topple the foul rotten booty, but in a remarkably unique manner. His fame soared to such heights that even Bandai Namco, the powerhouse behind Elden Ring, took notice of him. The saga of this man, this myth, this legend is a tale worth hearing. And what do you think about letting him regale us with the narrative, my little zucchini? Hiya, it's me, Roderica. After the edits, Boss Rani asked me to, um, tell you all about the winners of our last mystery thingy contest. Okay, so, um, the correct weapon was the... Uh... Well, which one was it? He, the envoy's horn. Oh, that's right. It was the elbow's corn. <sighs> you gotta be kidding me. Big congrats to all the uh, industrial furnaces who answered correctly. Remain until the end of the video to play more mystery thingy. Listen to me. You can't keep forgetting the names of the weapons. We've talked about this. But, but that was a hard one. Hello. How's it going? Well, hello there, legendary potman. Thank you for granting us this solo session with you. Hey! <laughs> Okay, I'll shut up. Anyway, Mr. Let Me Solo Her, care to introduce yourself for everyone? I, I go by Klein, Suboy, but most people know me as Let Me Solo Her. Basically, I'm an Elden Ring player that got uh, popular because I helped uh, thousands of people beat this one boss that everyone regards it as the hardest boss that FromSoft has ever made. This hardest boss in the game, coincidentally, is with us today. Rotten t why don't you fill us in on how Let Me Solo Her helped those other gamers? Rotten t up funny today? What happened? Did you suck a clown's ass this morning? Just answer the f question. Fine, fine. But you're gonna have to pay me double for having to talk about this guy. <sighs> it's you, you puny little tarnished. It's been a hot minute, and surprise, you're still quivering in fear at the sight of my majestic being. I remember as if it were yesterday. For those unfamiliar, Elden Ring lets you summon players to hold your hand against tough bosses. These players would come into your world, navigate the area with you, and fight the boss alongside you. Let me solo her was one of those players leaving his summon sign right next to my boss room, as if he was some sort of hero of the people. With the difference that instead of fighting alongside you, he would take the whole battle completely on his shoulders. This earned him the respect and love of a big part of the Elden Ring community, while the other part despised him with fervor for, uh, reasons. And you know what? I'd hate on him too. He deserves the hate. He deserves- Okay, rotten t That's enough. Go cope and seethe somewhere else. We'll talk about the hate a bit later. What I want to ask you now is, why did you pick Rotten T specifically for this? Was there a particular reason? So some people have already known this, but uh, since Melania is a hard boss, I myself have also had a hard time fighting her at the very beginning. I died to her uh, quite a lot. I think it was like 242 times that I died to her before I eventually beat her. And that just really stuck with me for some reason that I, I really want to really defeat this boss, not in a literal way, but more of a, like, get better so I can completely say that I beat this boss. 
on my own, and I'm going to help other people do it as well. At least you now know that you should not feel bad for losing a lot to Yeasty Butt. It took the legend over 240 tries to finally pop her zit, so nothing to feel bad about there. It was definitely tough for the few hundreds of times because it was at the very beginning, so people still don't know her moveset. So the host would die over and over and over again. I, it was so, it was so sad seeing so many people die. That's why I chose the name eventually as Let Me Solo Her. Given that Millennia is as aggressive as a pack of rabid rune bears, and for some reason people just won't level vigor, death was basically knocking on the door for those oblivious hosts. And this is where the name proved its worth as hosts tended to understand the message and just stood there mesmerized while the magician worked his magic. His samurai magic, to be precise. Before I actually named myself Let Me Solo Her, I wouldn't say I had the skills to really do it. So I only I only did that, put on the name when I was completely sure that I could solo her without taking a hit. And even after, I still died a lot. There were a lot of failed attempts, definitely. Now, many folks might assume this is the handiwork of a seasoned Souls veteran, a presence since the early days of Demon Souls. But let me ask you, how long have you truly been playing Souls games? My first Souls games was Dark Souls 3, and that came out in 2016. So I've been playing it for like the past eight years now. I got introduced by a friend of mine to play it, and it all started from there. While he may not have endured the torment of conquering other boldness-inducing bosses in the oldest titles, Let Me Solo Her did amass some experience in Dark Souls 3. We, personally, aren't too fond of that one, but hey, to each their own. Moving on to the next question, is there any reason you chose that particular build and fashion? I mean, the drip do kind of be dripping. I mean, after learning almost every moveset of a boss, putting on armor is just not necessary. It's just useless. So following like from soft traditions of being a naked player means that you're you're good at the game. So other than that, all I had to decide was to what to put on my head because that would be pretty much uh, iconic for the look. I wasn't really going for like an iconic look at the time. I didn't know it would blow up to where I am today. But I either I, it was either down to putting on the Blythe's wolf mask or the jar helmet. And at the end, I thought the jar helmet would have been a bit more suited look. Uh, you were gonna do what with Blade's head? <coughs> Um, never mind. Yes, the jar helmet does look iconic and a little sexy, to be honest. But what's the scoop with the double katanas? Any strategic genius behind that or just a fancy fashion statement? It, there wasn't really much thought behind it. I, I like katanas. So, uh, and then Rivers of Blood at the time was considered the best weapon in the game. Everyone was talking about it, so I decided to equip it. But having one katana didn't really feel right when battling Melania for me. So I, I decided to go with two. Uh, everyone, everyone always thinks that I'm such a genius for having Frost as well as Bleed so that it cancels out somehow. I don't even know what that even does. I just did it for looks, basically. What Let Me Solo Her is talking about here is the property of fire damage, not bleed of resetting the frostbite meter. Black Knife Tish has spilled the beans on this in our latest short, by the way. But the scoop is when you sizzle an enemy with fire damage already frostbitten. The frost takes a hike, giving you the green light for another frostbite proc, which deals big damage. And since Let Me Solo Her inflicts frostbite using a cold katana and fire damage plus bleed with rivers of blood, the burst damage procs of frostbite and bleed synergize pretty well. Hey! And I, I had no idea it worked like that. It was just purely coincidental. I've also noticed that you don't use the Ash of War of Rivers of Blood. Is there any reason behind that? The Ash of War is a nice gimmick that I can use against her, but it actually makes you open up to a lot of her damage. Once you use it, you, you are more prone to getting hit. So I'm not used to that. As well as, um, it's just more of a dis play of skill, I guess, because just holding R2, uh, stun locking Melania is just not as fun when you have to fight her like hundreds of times. 
For those unfamiliar, the Ash of War of Rivers of Blood, also known as Corpse Piler, used to be quite a powerhouse until the Nerf Hammer struck in patch 1.06. The sheer strength it wielded led to somewhat tedious and monotonous gameplay, so it's understandable why Let Me Solo Her didn't use it. We could confidently say that his rise to popularity also had something to do with the lack of Corpse Piler in his gameplay, since most Elden Ring gamers loathed it. And speaking of popularity, how did Bandai contact you exactly? Um, it was actually on the day of me streaming for my 1000 Splania kill, and Elden Ring Twitter page was uh, sent me a message, and I clicked on it and said that they were a representative from Bandai Namco, and that they wanted to send me something. And then I, I just couldn't believe my eyes back then. And they asked me for like details, address, and then they said they would be sending it uh, pretty soon. The channel, YouTube channel, actually came to cheer me on during the stream too, so that was very nice. During Let Me Solo Her stream, a spectacle where a thousand millennia met their demise for the enjoyment of countless tarnished warriors, the dream message for any streamer materialized in the chat box. It was none other than Bandai Namco, and they brought forth a surprise for our pot warrior. They sent me one of their, um, uh, their... I wouldn't call it a care package, but it's, it's something like that. There's uh, only 40 ever made in the world, and I got one of them. The cool thing is that it's a custom one as well, because of the letter that was signed by Bandai Namco themselves. Uh, it has a sword, it has a cloak, I think it's Melina's cloak from the game, as well as a handwritten note from the Bandai Namco team, a copy of the Elden Ring map, and then a wooden, a wooden art piece that I have it sitting on my shelf right now. It's pretty cool. This marks a historic moment in the Souls series. Being acknowledged by Bandai for in-game achievements is a feat that even Otsdava, with his remarkable Dark Souls 2 no-hit run, hasn't achieved. Let Me Solo Her has become an icon, a beacon of hope for Elden gamers worldwide. However, as is the case with any public figure, haters couldn't resist emerging. Okay, so you've probably stumbled upon some Reddit threads where people claim you're not anything special or overrated some are just dripping with jealousy how do you feel about these opinions i mean they're 100 percent correct anyone else could have done it every time someone becomes famous you know there's all these controversies there's people that don't like you even though a lot of people like you so i just try to stay away from it as much as possible at the end of the day i'm just a player that that just killed a lot of bosses well, one boss, for example, for a lot of players. I wouldn't say it was skillful as well as like productive as some people would have put it, but I just like what I did and for some reason I got popular off of it. I know some people are kind of mad saying that it wasn't the real FromSoft like vision that I just uh, all these people that I've helped haven't really played the game through themselves and I'm robbing them of their experience and I'm like, you know, that's, that's pretty fair. I can see that. But at the end, it's, it's, it's how everyone else wants their playthrough to go through. So it's, it's up to them. Let Me Solo Her just happened to be in the right place at the right time. He's a gamer having fun doing his favorite thing, and the community liked him so much that they did the rest. His feat is still impressive though, considering that Millennia becomes stronger when co-oping, yet he faced her solo and defeated her for the host. So yeah, La Serada, you can quit crying now. Nobody cares about you nor your 27 attempts. Oh, eso tuvo que doler. And this is something we've discussed in a previous video. Everyone can tailor their PvE experience to their liking. If Let Me Solo Her brought joy to some by defeating Millennia on their behalf, that's perfectly okay. Did they miss out on the true experience? Likely. But it's their decision in the end. However, what isn't their choice, though, are invasions. Would you suggest PvP to those who haven't given it a shot yet? Uh, I, I like participating in like any multiplayer aspects of any FromSoft game. Like, I know lots of people hate being invaded. They're like, just leave us alone, we just want to play the game. And honestly, for me, I like I like helping people as much as also invading other people because I think it's just fun. It's just part of the Dark Souls or uh, Soulsborne experience. I, I really hope everyone experiences it, even if they don't like it, because sometimes it just clicks with you, sometimes it doesn't, but I, I would recommend it. I know it's not for everyone, but at least I would recommend them trying it out. If they have a bad experience, that sucks. I really hope they keep trying though, but I know it's not for everyone, so if, if you don't want to experience it, just play offline. If you're going to summon someone else, you are going to get, probably going to get invaded. Just, it is what it is. 
as you can see, even the legend himself is telling you to give PvP a go. My little chubby nugget. Perhaps you should listen to his words of wisdom and don't miss out on this experience either. You can always go back and face rotten by yourself anytime. You can always welcome an invader and have a fun match against them. The important thing to know is it's never too late to experience anything in Elden Ring. That's why we asked Let Me Solo her to solo rotten for us. Because we never had that experience before. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Klein, better known as Let Me Solo Her, for being a part of this video. Chances are you're already subscribed to his channel, but if not, you can find the link down below in the description. Crafting this video was an enjoyable journey for all of us, offering a delightful throwback to the rich history of Elden Ring's community. My hope is that this serves as inspiration for newcomers to delve into every facet of the game and savour all its delights. I'll be seeing you little nuggets in our next thingy. Don't forget to do some exercise every day. And always give it your best. Bye! Why is he gone yet?